Welcome to Home Time with Pastor Tom Snyder. At this moment, we would like to thank Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church for being our gracious sponsor. And now, here's Pastor Tom with some announcements. Hey guys, this is Pastor Tom. I'm pastor of Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church here in uh, Hedgesville, West Virginia. Uh, we've had the blessing of preaching and traveling all over the world. We got radio programs, uh, Facebook Live, a YouTube channel, and you've tuned in to one of our archive recordings of our radio program. I hope you enjoy it, but more than that, I hope you are ministered to by it. So sit back and enjoy, and uh, we'll come back with you with a few messages at the end of the program. See you soon. All right, I want to get into the Bible, the book of Genesis, and this is important, what I feel God has given us here this morning. I'd say I'm going to get in a hurry, but where are you going? What you going to do? I, I mean, I know a couple of you may have to go to work or something. I know Eden's got to go to work or whatever. But yeah, you're not going to the restaurant. If you are, it's just takeout, and you can do that anytime. Amen. So, you know, what we go, you know, let's just go ahead and let God go and do what he's going to do. Amen. Don't you want to hear from God tonight? Let me share with you what happened last night in, in church. Pastor Tony Conley was preaching. We'd already had a beautiful worship service. Uh, brother and sister dance, and then Marcus and uh, the other brother was with us. We just, I mean, the worship service was just, I mean, treetop tall. They, they sang, uh, uh, I had them start out that song, Waymaker. And then they sang that song, Child of God, There's No Fear to a Child of God, and the power of God moved. And then Brother Tony changed his entire message and uh, gave a prophetic message. And why, in the middle of his preaching, he preached on what if. And the, and the basics were, what if Moses wouldn't have went through the Red Sea? What if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wouldn't went through the fiery furnace? Uh, what if uh, uh, Gideon wouldn't have... Uh, listen to God and, 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 uh, and conquered. And what the stories that we tell today, what if they wouldn't have done that? And, and he built it all up, uh, you know, just tremendously. And then he got to the climax of his, of his sermon. And he said, what if this co uh, coronavirus didn't exist? And what if the church didn't rise up to the move of God? And he built that thing up. You know, everybody's seeing it as a detriment. I'm telling you. Uh, it's not a detriment. God is at work here. And when he got to that point in the sermon, I'm sitting back here about as far as Oscar is from me. Now, I've never seen this before in my life. Now, already once this week, I've seen an angel right here. God is moving in spiritual things in my life. And I'm seeing things that, you know, I've seen, in the, I've seen angels in the past, but I'm seeing them more frequently. I looked up at Brother Tony. And I saw this, um, it wasn't like an angel. I'm going to describe it to you as the anointing. I could see the anointing physically rest on him when he got to the climax of that message. What if we didn't let God move in the middle of this coronavirus? And for that period of about two to four minutes, there rested on his shoulders I'm going to call it an anointing, but it was a visible anointing. I could see it, and when he moved, it was like a shadow that was engulfing him. It was on his shoulders, and I could, I could see that. And I started, I was standing up, because I was already standing up from the preaching. And I started looking around, making sure it wasn't the light, playing tricks on, with my glasses, coming off that organ, and you know how it is in there. And uh, sure enough, it wasn't. And when he got done preaching... I mean, when he got done that climax and went back into regular teaching, it went away. And I got up and shared it with the crowd. And uh, Brother Randy then told me later on, he saw the same thing. And a couple other people in the, in the building saw it too. Amen. In the midst of this, somebody made this statement like this. God has always moved the strongest when the world's at its weakest. Did you hear what I'm saying? For some of you that's been wanting to see the extraordinary of God, God's moving in extraordinary ways. The miracles, the, the touch 
the power of God. And this has nothing to do with what I'm preaching on. When I was praying yesterday here in the church, I started praying that God would give me, uh, give us more of the gifts of the Spirit and give me the gift. And I asked for a double portion. I've already got the gift of faith, but I asked God for a double portion of the gift of faith. Because the opposite of fear is faith. The opposite of fear is faith. And I feel that we need a of faith. I feel I need a double portion. I'm surrounded by more doubt than I think I've ever been surrounded in my life. Everywhere I go, I'm bumping into doubters and, and fear mongers. And they're scared. And it's not all in the world. Some of it's in the church. Some of it's, you know, some of it's related to me. Amen. It's a, it's a fear. But, you know, greater he that is in me. Oh, y'all didn't hear me or you'd been shouting. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I expect fear in the world. This is the reason that the world is having trouble with this. Amen. Because they don't know what it's like outside of the world. They don't know what it's like to live outside of fear. They think they're strong enough, rich enough, more powerful enough to overcome. Can't. They don't have an answer. But I've got an answer for it. It's the same answer I've had, amen, for the last, what, 40 years of my life. It's Jesus. He's the same answer. The same one that's kept me and everything else is the same one that's going to keep me today. Amen. Well, all that has nothing to do with what I'm preaching. Turning your Bibles to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number 23. God gave me this yesterday morning when I was here. Genesis chapter number 23, and let's everyone stand. We're going to read verses 15 through 9. In Genesis 24, we're going to read verses 15 through 9. I've got a lot more scripture, but because of time, we're going to read just that. Amen. Genesis chapter 24, verse 15. And it came to pass before he had done speaking, and behold, Rebekah came out who was born to Bethel, son of Melchah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher up on her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hastened and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until thou have done drinking. Skip all the way over to verse number 58. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. Amen. I will go go. I want to preach on this thought this morning God gave me yesterday. This is the time for Rebecca. This is the time for Rebecca. Amen. On February the 9th in this pulpit I preached a message called Lot's Way, America's Way. And in that message, in fact I, I dug it up yesterday. I'm going to try to get it put out on the, if it's not on the YouTube channel that you can re-listen to it. When I listened to it again myself yesterday, it made the hair stand up on my arm. Some of the things that I said, I actually said in that message about the, the churches are shutting down at night. And the, the churches chose to shut down at nighttime on Sunday nights. And the churches chose to give up their Wednesday night services. And I talked about, if you remember right in that message, I talked about how it was a choice. And how Lot chose the plains of Sodom. He wasn't forced to go into the plains of Sodom. And I, and I said, I told the results of Lot's choice and how that Abraham had prayed for Lot. And at the end, God did spare Lot himself and his two daughters, but Lot basically lost everything. And during that message, all through that message, I was sprinkled that God took care of Abraham and Abraham's seed. If you remember that message, if you were here, um, and now looking back on what I'm seeing happening now, 
uh, God told me yesterday it's time for part number two. Yes, the, the days of Lot in America, uh, Lot is having a reckoning. There is a reckoning coming to the nominal Christian. And I explained uh, last week, if you didn't hear me, how that the whole United States thinks they're Christian. Everybody thinks they're Christian just because they're an American. Amen. Or because they go to, it's so bad that there's, that, that there are, it is so bad that there are people that are literally in, in Buddhist camps and all kind of craziness and they call themselves Christian because they adhere to some of the teachings of Christ, some of the teachings of Christ. And to those people, they're the lots. They've chose their abortion. They've chose their homosexuality. I, I, I want to share with you Brother Rufus's prayer yesterday here. He said this virus started in China, which has been the most persecuted country for Christians in the last 50 years. Y'all didn't hear what I said. This started in China. Right now, it's moving in the mega centers across uh, the United States. If you will do the research, some of the places that this has broke out the biggest, and there, you mark my words, it's going to have the, the biggest effects. You check out some of the leaders from those districts and the things that they have voted for. You, you follow this. Someone says it's coming to everybody. It is not coming for the one that is covered by the blood of Christ. Now, if you disagree with me, you don't open yourself up to that. That's between you and God. I'm standing on the word of God. No plague shall come nigh my dwelling. Amen. And if I drink any deadly drink, it shall not harm me. And if a snake bite me, I shall throw it off into the fire. I'm getting way ahead of myself. But as he prayed that prayer, and as we looked, the lot is receiving what lots receive. Now, I'm going to say something here, and I've realized, this is on Facebook, and I've realized there may be some here that disagree with me. The wrath of God, what God is doing, God is going to do. Now, we can be like Abraham, and God will listen, and God will be merciful. Do you hear me? But at the end of the day, God already knew how many people were coming out of Sodom. He started with a huge number and came down and there was only four that walked out of the city. Amen. I'm sorry I'm spending so much time, but I feel like some have forgotten and there's some that wasn't here to hear that part of the message. At the end of the day, God was merciful on Lot with Lot. He got him out of the city. But really, at the end of the day, uh, the Moabites and the, uh, uh, I forget the other uh, height that came out of the loins, the, the misery that came because of the choices that they had. Amen. Lot's fate has been sealed. I knew I wouldn't go get an amen on that. But you read your Bible. Lot's fate was sealed when he chose the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. The only thing that could possibly change this is we're living in the dispensation of grace. But with that in mind, I want to begin my message. From, verse, from chapter 23, verse number 19. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah. Sarah did not get to see Rebekah. Sarah did not get to see her son Isaac marry Rebekah. This is important for later on in this message. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the fields of Mike Phila. She died. And as I was praying and I was praying this message, just about everybody that came out of the World War II generation and those that came out of what we call the divine healing Moments in the church, uh, the latter rain movements in the church, the Billy Grahams, the Oral Roberts, um, all these great men, they died. They died. It was God's will for that time 
to shut. Amen. They died. God has showed me. Amen. Uh, uh, the Norman Silvers, the Raymond Jones, the Hennis Foxes, the Harold Hesses of this area, their time has come and gone. Amen. Now, God's not done, but there's a change on the way. Ooh, we don't like change. There ain't not one of us in here like change. Amen. Except for my boy CJ. He changes his clothes worse than anybody I've ever seen. Amen. He changes his clothes. My goodness, he likes to change his clothes. Amen. But let me tell you, we don't like change. But there's a change coming. Now, I don't know what's going to be at the end of this thing. God hasn't showed me that. But I will tell you that the, the current church as you see it will no longer look the same at the end of this. Now, that you can take it to the bank. And I will promise, this is my opinion. I'm not prophesying. But the mega huge numbers in churches and stuff, I, I believe that that is coming to a close. Are we going back to the cottage prayer meeting and the, and the cottage churches? I, I, I don't know. But I'm, I am telling you that there is change that's coming. Change is already coming. Man, change is coming. And, and this technology, I know that there is a lot of you getting your church, amen, from this. And, that, and that's really great if that's what you got. But you can't have point of contact. You can't have your, someone lay their hands on you and pray for you. You can't have somebody anoint you with oil. You can't receive a spiritual hug or a kiss on the cheek through this. Amen. There, there's all kinds of, this is not the answer. Amen. This is like a Band-Aid. This is not the answer. Will we, will we be going like the China church that has been in existence for decades underneath the ground having church? And it's one of the most powerful churches in the world and you've never heard of it. It could very well be that that is the way that the United States is coming. But Sarah died. After she died, the next verse in verse number one says, and Abraham was old and Abraham's getting old. I hate to admit this, but I'm getting old. Amen. Some of you in here are getting old. Amen. When Mike was talking about running, Phil Munson turned around and looked at me and said, the only one I'm running to is Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Our, our, our running days, are, you know, unless God gives us supernatural touch, and he is, there are a few that God is giving a supernatural touch and giving them strength. Jimmy Swagger turned 85. I've never seen an 85-year-old man play the piano and do the things he does. He's up early in the morning in them sheriff funds. He teaches, you know, for hours a day, and God's given him an extraordinary strength, but he's still old. God's going to re revitalize him in the next chapter. In fact, he's going to get married again. Abraham's going to get married again. Going to have a couple more kids before he checks out. But he's getting old. What that means when he's getting old, that he needs to set up for the next generation. So he calls a servant, Eleazar, in, and he gives him instructions. Now, you can read all this, and I hope you do, but because of time, uh, amen, I'm just going to kind of quote it and maybe pick out a couple verses. But he calls Eleazar and he says, I want you to go back to my country. I want you to find a wife. For my boy Isaac. Now Isaac's a whole different person. Isaac is literally out of Abraham's uh, a seed. He's literally out of his loins. He is a direct. Uh, 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 he is a direct uh, benefit of the covenant of God. You ain't got to worry about Isaac. Some of you in here are Isaacs. Amen. I named a couple people. I said Harold Hessen. I got some of his kids in here. You're a direct benefit. You know, now you can make your choice, amen, but you're a direct benefit of some of these ones. Uh, Norman Silver, some of you in here, you're a direct benefit of the covenant that God had with them. All you got to do is receive it. It's yours. Oh, I didn't get an amen out of that. Amen. 
but you're a direct benefit of that. We got some Isaacs in here that have been in the place. Amen. I, I look over here at my mom and my Aunt Patricia. Amen. They're Isaacs. Aunt Bernice, they're, they're Isaacs. Sister Hess, they're Isaacs. You don't have to worry about the Isaacs in this country. I like to say I'm an Isaac. Amen. I, I know my heritage. Thank God for my heritage. Now, you can't rely completely on your heritage, but let me tell you something. I tell my kids all the time, amen, you can run all you want, amen, but God's going to get you because God got me, and I'm sicking God on you. Amen. I used to tell them, Eden, when she was raised, Eden sitting here, she didn't want to be country. I said, you can go wherever you want. You're still country, girl. Amen. She, she dresses. I don't want to wear it. I'm, I'm, I don't want to like that. That's all this, that, and the other. Now she's coming all back to her country ways. Amen. That's Isaac. You don't have to worry about Isaac. But Abraham knew that Isaac needed a help. We've lost Lot. Lot is no longer in the picture. We are losing Lot. Amen. All the churches, some, some, not all the churches, but a lot of the churches that were Lot's churches, they're just a shell. They're going to be just a shell of what they were. The social church, the church that wasn't no Puritan club or a bingo parlor, amen, they're, they're not going to have no effect on this world anymore. It's just the way it's going to be. Amen. Now, the blood-bought church, amen, that may not look as fancy, may not have all the decorations, the Isaac church, it's all right. But God is saying that Isaac needs a help meet. And Lot, who could have been our help meet, who could have been side by side with us, and been the one that helped us he chose the wrong way this is good stuff God's given me this stuff amen Lot chose the wrong way but see God knows what we need amen he said in his word it's good for man not to be alone amen that's what the Bible says it's good for a man not to be alone amen and loneliness is one of the tools that the devil uses the hardest. You've heard me preach that. And Abraham said, I'm getting old, Eleazar. Go and get me a woman for my son. He said, I want you to go back to my home country. Notice where he said, that in the land that he was in, he didn't want him to pick a woman out of there. There's only one way to come to God. There's only, it's still the same. No matter what the dispensation, no matter what the age, nor what the time, there is only one way to come to God, and that is the Spirit has got to draw you, and you've got to and repent of your sins, amen, and you've got to ask for forgiveness, and you must be born again. Jesus said that to Nicodemus. You must be born again. There is no other way. You can't buy your way into heaven. You can't entertain your way into heaven. Charitable acts will not get you into heaven. Amen. You must be born again. So he told Eliezer, he said, I want you to go back to the land. Eliezer said, what if she won't come with me? Listen, listen, pops. I, I know what you're saying. The boy needs a woman, and I'm, I'm good with you. If you want to go back to your family, go back to your family and find a woman for him. I ain't got a problem with that. Said, but listen, we're, I'm not going down here and buying a loaf of bread. She's going to want to check out the goods. Read all this and see if, I'm, if, if, if it's not in line. I, I'm breaking it down. And, and said... This is what Eleazar said. He said, let me take him with me. Let me take him with him. And, and Abraham said emphatically, no. He said, then he asked him again. Well, whenever, whenever Eleazar agreed to it, he made him swear. Abraham made Eleazar swear to him what he would do. And he said, you've got to promise me one thing again. He said it twice. Do not take Isaac back. Listen to me, Mr.
all this. Holy Ghost Church, blood wash church. We are not to compromise. We're not to give one inch. We are not to go back to the world. Amen. I'm telling you, Abraham. I'm telling you, Isaac. Amen. We cannot compromise. We must stay true to who we are in Jesus Christ. No matter how this thing shapes out, if they want to put a chip in your hand to get you to get something to eat, you can not go back to the beggarly elements of this world. Someone says, I don't see it coming to that. It will come to that eventually because Revelation says it will. Now, whether it's today, tomorrow, next week, next year, I don't know. Amen. But I'm telling you, you cannot go back to the world to get your bride. That's why the apostle Paul said, hey, it would be better for me to be alone. Amen. Then to get the wrong one. You can't do that. He said, you can't go back to get this. So he convinced Eleazar to go. And Eleazar made a, uh, made a, a commitment to go. I'm telling you right now, God's got Eleazar's, and they're on their camels right now, and we're getting ready to take a ride. <laughs> Ooh, we're going looking for Rebecca. <laughs> Amen. God's got some Eleazar's that are picked right now. Amen. To go find that Rebecca. They don't know who Rebecca is now. They don't know for sure what their compass is, how to get to where they're going. <laughs> Amen. They're just pointed in the right direction. I'm here to tell you in the darkest time, in this time where people are feeling the most, amen, I'm telling you, there are some young people, there are some Rebecca's that are out there, they don't know it yet, amen, but there's an Eleazar coming for you, honey, amen, and your life is about to never be the same, the reason they're coming for Rebecca is because Lot chose to throw it away, notice what I said, he chose to throw it away, amen, God is coming for a Rebecca in this last generation, and it won't be, amen, what you think it is, it won't be who you think it is. Amen. They won't look the way you think they should look. Say amen. See, because Sarah's already gone. Because if Sarah was choosing a bride for Isaac, amen, you can bet she'd have a lot to say. Amen. But Sarah had to be put out of the way. Amen. Some of old stuff that's out there. Now listen to what I'm about to say. It just wouldn't mix, amen, with what's going on today. Because God's getting ready to bring some people up, amen, into this thing that's been all tattooed up, all earringed up, amen. The things of the world has been on them. Their hair is black and blue and yellow and orange. Amen. They got this going on and that going on. Amen. But God sees their heart. Ooh, I know I couldn't preach this. Amen. In Sarah's church. Amen. But we're in Abraham's church. Amen. Ha <laughs> ha. Amen. I know Sarah had to, you know how mamas are. Amen. I got a mama here looking at her boy. Amen. She wants only the best. Amen. For her boy. Amen. And I, that's all right. Amen. But sometimes God's got a certain one picked out. Amen. That you didn't have picked out. Amen. God's got them picked out. Ooh, I'm preaching better than y'all listening. Uh-huh. And Eleazar went down there, and Eleazar didn't know how to do it. You know, I don't know how to do this. I, I, I really don't. Do I put my hands on people? Do, do people do I, do I hug people? Do I shake people? What do I do? I don't know what to do. Oh, how do I minister to people? How do we do it right now? Everybody's saying, pray for the preachers. Pray for the preachers. Yeah, you should have been praying for them all along. Amen. We've been praying for the pastors all along. Well, that's a different message. Amen. You know, I should be at the top of your prayer list. Amen. When you get done praying for yourself and your immediate family, Pastor Tom, whoever, if I'm your shepherd, I should be at the top of your prayer list every day. Amen. It shouldn't just be because of what's going on today. Pray they get the mind of God. You should be praying that I got the mind of God for the last 10 years. Amen. And Eliezer, he, 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 he don't know what to do, so he gets, he gets down into the country. And he, and he starts talking to the Lord. That's the only thing I can do is talk to the Lord. And he said, Lord, send me, send me a damsel that'll give me a drink. Send me a damsel that'll give me a drink. 
Hey guys, Pastor Tom coming back at you. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed the message that you've just listened to. I hope you were ministered to by it and that you'll be able to use it to minister to somebody else and help us spread the word around the world. If you've enjoyed this, if you've got questions, comments, or a prayer request, you can contact us at Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church Facebook page. And uh, if you would like to give a donation that helps us support all our media projects and our mission projects to help us spread the gospel around the world, uh, just see the PayPal link below. Now remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord.